गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव कवर द ओरिजिन ऑफ कोल्ड वॉर और कॉजेज ऑफ कोल्ड वॉर इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर टूडे वी विल कवर द मेजर इवेंट्स ऑफ द कोल्ड वॉर राइट विच आर इम्पॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम योर एग्जाम परस्पेक्टिव बिकॉज द क्वेश्चन विल बी मोर और लेस ऑन इवेंट्स ओनली डेट्स बिकॉज दिस ईयर ऑल्सो द क्वेश्चन वॉज लाइक विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग वॉज an event of cold war and in option there was creation of bisonia marshall plan truman doctrine and i think cuban missile crisis truman doctrine marshall plan cuban missile crisis all three are the prominent events of cold war most prominent is cuban missile crisis and cre creation of bisonia was not the part of cold war so the right answer in that question was creation of Bisonia, because they have asked which of the following is not not there was. So whenever you are attempting any question, focus on these words: not, following, yes, true, false, kind of words. Okay. So in yesterday's class, we discuss that Cold War was a period from where to where. 1945 to 1991 good evening but this is not the final date why because many says that cold war started after this or even not on the starting date there is not much confusion but on the end there is very much confusion because the berlin wall was in 9 fall in 1989 and many historians many scholars they argued that with the fall of berlin, uh, berlin wall the cold war ended right this much is clear so whenever somebody ask you like exact period of cold war so it can be 1945 till 1991 1945 till 1989 1945 till 1919 yeah but because berlin wall was the major symbol of the cold war because is it divided germany although germany was divided into east and west germany but this concrete wall in the physical form was created that is why when people broke this war wall sorry so at that time it was assumed that now the cold war has ended right so whenever somebody ask you like what is the exact time period of cold war so you can say that there is no exact time period of cold war although many says that from 1945 till 1991 other says from 1949 till 1989 but many other says that not exactly after second world war like second world war ended in 1945 but there was time for one and half year or two year and after that with truman doctrine marshall plan with these kinds of things cold war started but although on an agreed period is 1945 till 1991 but still for your clarification there is no exact similar is the case with phases when we try to divide the cold war into phases so some divide into three phases some divide into four phases some even divide into five phases right some even divide according to decade wise some according to event wise like the, this was a decade of ditant or their treaty was signed ditant strategies and all so there also there is no finalization but there many again prominent scholars they say that cold war can be divided into three phases right but anyways from your exam perspective we have to know the major events of the cold war right and just a recap you recap from yesterday's class yesterday we studied why cold war is known as cold war why because it never turned hot first definition second definition that it was a very war at a low intense scale not a very large scale war and third is no direct confrontation or fourth is that nuclear war did not happen this was also the reason right and the so from this definitions we can say that there are many ways to define cold war but basically is that nuclear weapons were not used and nuclear deterrence prevail that is why this war is known as cold war 
or you can say the militaries of both the superpowers us and ussr never fought directly although they were fought, uh, fighting but through proxy so they never fought in a direct manner that is why it is known as cold war right and then who coined the term cold war this also we studied george orwell and when george orwell who is an english writer in 1945 he coined the term cold war right and cold war as we have discussed that cold war has its genesis in the first world war itself right although we think that or we believe that many of the immediate cause or causes after the second world war like postdam conference then another one is iron curtain so these are responsible for cold war but prior to that we can trace two kinds of reasons two types of reasons which led to cold war first is geopolitical reason second is ideological reason right in geopolitical reason we can see that in 1917 what happened russian revolution right which is also known as bolshevik revolution russian socialist revolution many names right so russian revolution happened and when this revolution ended so it emerged as a very big success and in 1922 what happened in the world very prominent event first communist state in the world was established which state ussr right and who led this revolution vladimir lenin right one important event we have discussed that after the revolution two types of groups emerged in ussr one was reds second was whites reds you can say pro communist and whites were pro capitalist they were in ussr only but they were supported by the capitalist countries mainly by the united states and britain right so when this russian revolution happened and first communist state in the world was established that time russia started expanding also expansion because these are the geopolitical ambitions of a nation to expand so from geopolitical perspective you can trace this origin but this geopolitical reason will not give us answer of trust deficit which was also the reason for cold war why cold war happened because there was trust deficient between ussr and western nations right and when we have to trace this trust deficient factor then we have to look at the ideological reason of cold war now ideological reason explains the trust deficit factor right ideological reason says what was cold war prominent feature the prominent feature was ideological rivalry capitalist versus communist right capitalist versus communist right and when this communist ideology emerged 1917 and these ideas were very much influenced the ideas of vladimir lenin who was leading the russian revolution his he was very much influenced by marx ideas so marx was against the class right capitalist class prominently because he believed that capitalist class exploit workers and all so we should overthrow them right we should create a classless society little bit idea about marx you have right so after that us saw that in many of its colonies not us other western nations 
in many of their colonies movement communist movement communist kind of revolution small groups revolt started happening and in that context at that time in 1925 in india also communist party of india was established in various colonies communist movement started happening because they were very much influenced by the success of russian revolution right so this was against the interest of western nation because they were capitalist nation they were mercantilist in their policies so this was against their interest so they try to overthrow or suppress these movements but they did not succeed and then finally they asked the united state that you should lead the world towards liberty freedom democracy human rights and all so you will represent all of us so basically the whole responsibility came on whom united states to promote liberty democracy freedom human rights kind of thing in the world that is why us led the capitalist world and another reason was western nations especially britain and france they were quite weak both in military and economic terms because they have suffered two world war although they emerged as a winner but as we know from the great illusion book itself that the cost of war is so high even for a winner right so although they emerged as a winner but still this time they were very weak in military and economy and us economy and military was you can say flourishing at that time same was the case with ussr so they both emerged as the superpower after second world war right so from ideological perspective and from geopolitical perspective you have understood the cold war geopolitical perspective is that communist started expanding because expansion is the aim so this was the geopolitical reason and there is no distrust because every nation wants to expand but this reason could not explain the trust deficit reason between us and ussr yeah but they are more bothered about communist so they want to contain communism na so the, but this reason could not explain the trust deficit right so trust deficit we can link from the ideological because they are not very much sure about the communist policies and then after world war 2 post dam conference happened in which russia demanded for some part of poland and us and uk did not agree to that and this also create uh, you know you can say kind of anger among russian soviets right second reason was the us drop nuclear weapon on the japan and this explosion nuclear explosion was an unprecedented display of us power in the world basically exploding nuclear weapon and after that us emerged as a single superpower in the world and this was not something which can be easily digested by soviets another reason which also linked to nuclear weapon is that that us kept their nuclear program so secret that they even tell this to their close allies especially to the us sorry ussr right and this also creates suspicion among soviets that maybe western nations have something big maybe they are planning something big against us also why because from the beginning they knew that western nations are not very much happy with our communist revolution or communist ideologies right this was also the reason then what happened iron curtain speech of winston churchill this further intensify the cold war this much you have understood this much is clear to you any other doubt so far right so these were the immediate causes what are the immediate causes post dam conference and second is iron curtain but long causes or which have started 2 3 decades earlier only what were they geopolitical and ideology and basically you can say one cause which was russian revolution and most importantly the success of that revolution uh because aftermath in many colonies other countries also started following communist ideology basically marx ideology right 
so this much is clear to you so till this you have clear idea when cold war started why started origin and everything and basic features of cold war bipolarity arms race ideological rivalry then space race you can also say other any other proxy wars right so arms race basically in terms of what nuclear not conventional weapons this much is clear right so yeah capitalist versus communist right so now today we will discuss major events of the cold war what were the major events of the cold war so first event was truman doctrine who was truman us president so us president in 1947 complete name is harry s truman good evening so he was what us president he came with truman doctrine and he says that we have to stop the expansion of communism right in the eastern european nations or in the western european because east was already in control of ussr so basically in the western european nations we have to restrict the expansion or restrict the influence of communism now how we can restrict by providing some kind of help so that they will remain under our influence so under truman doctrine us started providing any kind of aid whether it's financial military economic whatever they require to sustain their self so us thought that we will provide aid to the western european nation so that we can prevent the expansion of communism there this much you understood what was the truman doctrine now from your perspective what is important to remember the date of truman doctrine so kindly underline this truman doctrine was announced on 12 march 1947 right and by whom us president harry s truman so here is a good example that us start providing aid to greece and turkey military and economic aid so under truman doctrine they start provide they started providing aid to these nations especially western european nations right then historians believe that when this doctrine was announced so we can say that cold war in official terms official means coming from a authority cold war in official sense started why because the direct message of this doctrine was that we have to restrict the influence of communism right so when they start saying in a direct manner and that is also coming from an authority president so that is why historian believe that when truman doctrine was announced it was the official benchmark or the beginning of cold war era so if somebody will say you cold um, truman doctrine was the cause of cold war no it was the event truman doctrine is clear to you now second event is berlin blockade this much you have uh, i have given in your notes even i have given more than require so you just have to remember who announced this doctrine and when right and in your mind just simply remember that why they announced this doctrine they announced this doctrine to stop the expansion or influence of soviet communism right now second event is berlin block so after world war 2 allied power and axis power we have discussed yesterday who were the allied powers basically the winners of world war 2 and who were they us ussr britain france and axis power germany japan italy basically those who got defeat right in the world war 2 and after world war 2 germany was divided into two 
East and West Germany, right? And Berlin was what? Germany's capital, capital of Germany, right? So when Germany was divided between East and West Germany, so what Soviets started doing? They start creating a wall here so that they can prevent the movement of people from here to their here. In simple terms you understand. Basically they want to restrict any kind of movement so that communists should not come to the, sorry capitalists should not come to the east, right. But this was not started by the western nation. So Berlin blockade, basically wall was created by Soviet USSR, right. And one important point yesterday also I discussed uh, regarding this why Russia joined allied powers. Why? Because just before starting the second world war in 1939, Russia, basically USSR, he, uh, sorry, Russia and Germany, they both agreed that in the world war II we will not fight against each other and Russia was not involved in the world war II, right. Then what happened? Germany attack on Russia in 1941 and then western nations US and UK they sent help to Russia and after that or after this incident only Russia entered into world war II against Germany, right. So when this broke, uh, ball or you can say uh, Berlin blockade was created, this kind of created fear among western nations that Soviets can go so far, right. So that is why Berlin blockade is this symbol of Cold War and when this Berlin wall fall in 1989, that is why 1989 is also regarded as the year of end of Cold War. Now this you have understood, right. Because Berlin, Iron Curtain was an ideological wall, there was no in war in actual, but this wa wall was in actual form, physical form, right. So that is why it is known as the symbol of Cold War, right. If somebody will ask you, is there any kind of iron wall? Yes, but in ideological sense, in political military sense, but no physical form, no actual form. But Berlin, um, ha, Berlin wall was in actual form, physical form, concrete wall, like built and created. USA, U USSR, France and UK. Yeah. So, when the tension between Soviet Union and allied countries grew. So basically yesterday we also discussed about Grand Alliance, Grand Alliance basically the allied powers. When USSR joined allied powers, so then their alliance is known as Grand Alliance and when this Grand Alliance broke after the Iron Curtain and all, so basically this is also known as the beginning of Cold War era. So in your notes I have written that as the tension between the Soviet Union and allied countries grew, the Soviet Union applied Berlin blockade in 1948. So kindly remember this date, right. <coughs> then Berlin blockade was an attempt by the Soviet to limit the ability of allied countries to travel to their sectors to Berlin, basically to restrict any kind of movement from people here to there, but only in very uh, you can say very rare cases, movement was allowed, but in very, very rare cases, rare cases, sorry. So moreover on 13 August 1961, ab 13 August 1961 ko hua kya, ki jo communist government thi, German Democrat Republic, West Germany ki jo communist government thi, unho ne concrete wall banana shuru kar di, Berlin wall. So basically 1948 mein to Soviets ne blockade lagaya tha. Lekin 1961 mein what happened that German Democrat Republic government of West Germany, they started creating this wall in concrete form. So if somebody will ask you the year when it was established or built in concrete form, then 1961, right? Between East and West, Berlin. 
the wall was created to prevent its population from escaping soviet control east uh, berlin to west berlin which was controlled by the major western allies basically to control the movement of people then only under certain circumstances very rare cases people were allowed to move this much is clear so the berlin wall is a very important symbol of the cold war era and this wall fall in 1989 that is why 1989 is also known as the end of cold war this much is clear now why the berlin because when after world war 2 when the winners allied powers they were dividing germany so they divide germany and berlin was in center so capital uh, capital berlin uh, sorry berlin was not going entirely to the west and not to the east so they divide it from the center right now the important next event is marshall plan so put a star mark here three event which we have discussed till now third is marshall plan these all are important events from cold war perspective so marshall plan was announced in 1947 and who announced this marshall plan us secretary of state right he announced this marshall plan us secretary of state george marshall that is why it is known as marshall plan now why it is known as marshall plan if somebody will ask you you can tell right and what he basically did that he announced a program that is erp program kindly underline this in your notes european recovery program so he announced this program and he said that we will provide economic aid financial aid to all the european nations so that they can recover they can become economically strong right this program was nothing this marshall plan was nothing but just the extension or modified version of truman doctrine this much is clear because truman doctrine also talks about providing aid and this also talks about providing aid just a very minute difference that this specifically talk about economy and in truman doctrine military any kind of aid was there right so this program was nothing this plan was nothing but just the extension of truman doctrine this much is clear now the next is common form now what is cold war we told you na somebody was doing something other was doing something in response so when us uh, announced this marshall plan so in response soviet announced the common form plan so what is common form soviet first they called marshall plan as dollar imperialism so this is also the second name of marshall plan given by soviets not the second name but given by soviets so they say this program is nothing it is just the dollar imperialism so in response they launch the communist information bureau kindly underline this that in response to marshall plan soviet announced the communist information bureau in 1947 basically in the same year and they thought that under this program we will draw all the eastern european nations together right so basically response to the marshall plan then nato nato stands for north atlantic treaty organization and at present can anybody uh, at present can anybody tell me how many members are there in nato 31 at present 31 members and finland is the recent member finland ये आपके नोट्स में दिया हुआ है डोंट राइट जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड सो व्हाट हैपन दैट आफ्टर बर्लिन ब्लॉकेड और व्हाट हैपन दैट फियर स्टार्टेड इमर्जिंग अमंग रशिया सॉरी अमंग कैपिटलिस्ट नेशंस दैट सोवियट्स कैन डू एनीथिंग एंड इट आल्सो 
highlighted the weakness or unpreparedness of US military because if they were prepared they would have stopped but they could not right so it highlighted the flaws in their preparation or it also created fear among them so to protect themselves they launched nato north atlantic treaty organization so basically it is a regional organization because it is restricted to the north atlantic region second is it is although many get confused that it is kind of a collective security program because what nato's principle says that attack on any one of our member is like attack on all of us and we will retaliate in totality but this is not like collective security it is a military alliance not collective security collective security we have studied under league of nation and united nation and when we were discussing theories then also we discuss collective security no so if somebody will ask you that nato is like a collective security mechanism no it is a military alliance right so what happened that in 1948 western european nations signed a treaty known as brussels defense treaty brussels defense and later on in the subsequent year in 1949 this treaty was transformed into what nato treaty was signed in 1948 and in 1949 this treaty was transformed into nato and when this treaty was signed at sorry when nato was established that time there was 12 founding members and at present there are how many members we have already discussed 31 and finland joined in 2023 only right so nato's countries agreed that that attack any one of them will be attack on all of us right so we will retaliate under joint command this much you have understood first if somebody will ask you nato was established in 1949 you will say yes but in 1948 brussel defense treaty was signed among western european nations i have given this in your notes that in the under the treaty they promise that if any attack will happen or if in any case we require then our military will collaborate cooperate right but later on this treaty was joined by whom us canada portugal denmark iceland italy and norway and then they came together and in 1949 they converted this treaty into nato and in 1949 nato was established this much is clear now if us has established nato or you can say western nations obviously russia will also do something right like marshall plan then come in form so in response they came up with warsaw pact so warsaw pact was signed in 1955 kindly put a star mark here from your exam perspective because most probably they will ask the date and among which nations this was signed so this was signed between russia and her satellite states basically the east european nations west germany why they signed warsaw pact why because west germany was added to nato in response to that also and in response to nato also but west germany was also a member of nato in response to that russia came up with the warsaw pact and they signed it into 1955 and they and the pact was signed between ussr and its satellite states and the pact was a mutual defense agreement which the western country perceived as a reaction against western germany membership of nato everybody assumed that that west germany has been incorporated into nato that is why russia has created warsaw pact now i have given this map to you now this is not the colored here again but you can get colored one through the telegram channel so basically you can say that from east germany na 
yesterday which we were talking about iron curtain and all this region is of warsaw pact and this region of nato right so when you will go home just download the colored image from you did not get okay you can ask the management they will provide right so just see once right then korean war now korean war is also an important feature of cold war what is the timeline of korean war 1952-53 what happened that soviet union and china they start supporting north communist korean matlab north korean who were communist and they were supporting them to invade in south korea and south korea was under whom capitalist us so they were expanding and what happened that in response to that in response to their invasion of south korea when north korea invaded south korea in response us went to un because they were not fighting directly so through the un they were fighting in the korea what happened in 1951 the us forces led by douglas mac author crossed the 38th parallel now 38th parallel is the border line between north korea and south korea right and they triggered the entry of china in support of north korea so what happened that when the cross the 38th parallel when us cross the 38th parallel and enter to north korea then china got also involved into the korean war right then what happened to prevent further escalation peace talk begins in the end of 1951 peace talk was started to prevent so that this war should not lead to further casualties right what happened after that here you have to remember just one thing that india was an active member in settling the korean war or you can say in establishing peace talks among both the powers which were fighting in korea so from indian pers uh, perspective you have to remember this so korean peninsula by india what india did that india uh, you know it help in creating a bridge between us ussr and china so that peace talk can happen and in 1952 indian resolution on korea was adopted at the united nation so if anything is important from indian perspective then you have to remember that because you are an indian and you have to know or learn the indian perspective then in 1953 what happened that korean armistice agreement was signed between un command korean people army and chinese people army right so agreement was signed and then official cease fire peace treaty was signed in 1953 but now here is the twist everyone says that korean war ended in 1953 but in 1953 only cease fire was happened there was nothing like war was officially ended just a cease fire so finally in 1991 the year when cold war ended in 1991 north korea and south korea signed a pact agreeing to refrain from aggression they agree that we will not invade each other or we will not attack each other right so when somebody will ask you korean war ended in 1953 what you will say although cease fire happened in 1953 but it was not officially ended when it was officially ended 1991 this much is clear and when this cease fire happened then this at 38th parallel i have given you the image can you see in the map then at this 38th parallel korean demilitarized zone was established basically buffer zone and we know what is buffer zone small area of land or small state lying between two bigger states and i hope you all remember the features of a buffer state is bhutan a buffer state no nepal a buffer state yes right 
so as a student of political science or as a student of ir you should know these minute differences like when korean war ended somebody from layman perspective will say 1953 when you will say something with evidences or in a more logical manner then this shows that you have studied right no okay no then vietnam war same is the case in vietnam war that north vietnam was backed by soviet union and china and in south vietnam us and other western nations so but in this war this war started in 1955 and ended in so very long war started in 1955 ended in 1975 and who emerged victorious victory kiski hui communism ki because communi communist they succeeded in uniting the whole vietnam so basically capitalist faced a very big defeat here interesting thing apart from notes one interesting thing is us is the most powerful country in the world but very interesting fact is that it never won a single war in the world history you look in korea although they were pushing but ultimately they have to settle through the peace treaty then you look in vietnam you saw in afghanistan what happened ultimately they have to accept the demands of taliban so think logically or think very critically a very strong powerful nation of the world for which nothing is impossible everything is possible because they have the advanced military advanced technology but still they have never won even a single war in the world history forget about world war 1 world war 2 they were like allied kind of things they were not single but they have never won in even a single war they have lost everywhere and uh, the in many scholars says in a very um, who, those who support us they say that us never uh, you know lose a war it just uh, get out of the war when it lose interest in that war this is not the justification like think from a natural human nature perspective which is realist perspective that which country will not willing that that this country should win every country wants this na that whether the war is small or big but i should win this was very and us never won a war so interesting fact in vietnam they fight for so long but still they were not very much familiar with the guerrilla warfare techniques in which vietnamese were very much expert or you can say they know their land terrains and everything even despite of having all the best military technology they lost same is the case with afghanistan even afghanistan they fought for very long even for decades but still they did not get anything in return so today you also get to know one very interesting fact about us despite being a very powerful nation it never won a single war they are to chalo they were proxy na itna directly ha but what was happening but still you can say that very power in afghanistan they were directly involved na us military was there but they still they lost that to a terrorist group how shameful is this country imagining a country who is launching global war on terrorism and then the same country is holding talks with the terrorism terrorist hypocrisy these we will learn in west asia yeah the west asian politics is very much complicated <laughs> because they have shia sunni conflict and this that so vietnam war in this you can see 17th parallel so in the south us was supporting right pro capitalist regime and from the north soviet union and chinese were supporting the pro communist regime what what happened in the last that north vietnamese forces 
they succeeded in unifying the whole vietnam under communism and at the end in 1975 communist regime or communist government was established in vietnam right this much is clear now space race space race is the another important feature of cold war right dramatic very much then in 1957 when this space race started what happened that in 1957 very important event happened not only of the cold war era but of the whole human history what was that happened that russian launched sputnik 1 right and it was the first ever satellite to be launched the world has never witnessed something because till then till 1957 they were fighting for land and all nobody was thinking of space universe moon mars but when russian launched this us somewhere felt that we have got defeated or we have lost the race so what happened and what happened that us joined this race and in 1969 a major event happened that us landed its first man on the moon that is neil armstrong because they were very much of the suspicion that soviet should not reach to the moon or any kind of human species to the moon before us because already they have lost so now they want to win so when neil armstrong went to moon then in this race you can say that us won the space race somewhere <laughs> similarly so this much you have understood that kindly underline this that in 1957 soviet launched sputnik 1 this is just important world first artificial satellite this much second is 1958 in response now soviet will do something us will also do something so in response us launched its first satellite that is explorer 1 right kindly remember these dates from your exam perspective and then finally space race was won by the us when when first man of the united states that is neil armstrong reached to the surface of moon and the year is 1969 underline this now cuban missile crisis very very important event of the cold war very important now here you just have to listen the story first then you will underline first is what happened in cuban missile crisis that us plan that they will invade cuba through the bay of pigs now in your map i have marked here bay of pigs can you see this yeah so they will invade cuba through the bay of pigs and they will overthrow the communist government led by fidel castro right and he was supported by the soviet union so after this invasion fidel castro and soviets they decided to place some kind of nuclear weapons in cuba for a deterrence purpose not to attack us but for deterrence but us thought may be russia is planning to attack us so in 1962 soviet leader nikita khrushchev made an agreement with uh, communist leader in cuba what fidel castro that we will place some nuclear weapons nuclear missiles in your uh, country in your island country basically so that us will not attack you further in the future right and in this map you can see that this one small circle this shows that medium range ballistic missile if from cuba ussr would have used medium range ballistic missile then many of the U, uh, us region basically it's is uh, you can say eastern coast have been completely destroyed and even if they have used intermediate range ballistic missile then 70 or 80% of the us along with canada and mexico have been destroyed can you see this in map both the right yeah and you can also locate bay of fix right so then the cuba in us also started 
preparing for nuclear war right and uh, there were many plane shot the plane were shot by the communist of us and all many things happened basically spying and all when you will read it is in very detail that on this date this happened then they blocked some kind of ships in atlantic of the soviet but many reason but just not for your purpose just simple thing is but when this war was at you can say about to start or world was thinking like any time nuclear war can happen then what happened that nikita khrushchev of soviet union leader of soviet union write a letter to the us president john f kennedy and many says that it was a kind of very emotional letter and in the letter he said that uh, if this nuclear war will happen na then even no matter who will emerge as a victorious or not but land will not remain land because nuclear destruction is such in japan if you have heard that even today those people who were born in that region they are have some kind of defecting their bodies disability and all physically challenged some kind of right so this is that even i will win no matter because my whole land people they will no more so what i will do so it was a very kind of you can say emotional letter because he has written in uh, you can read this letter so on the internet so he has written like we will um, do doing this to human kind it will not be good and like this and when john f kennedy or you can say us government what very much sure that nikita khrushchev that is soviet leader he is ready to peace talk or he is ready for some kind of agreement but what happened on the next morning itself that nikita khrushchev he again write a letter to the john f kennedy and said that look we will only take our missile back from cuba to the soviet to the ussr only on one condition that you have to take back your missile from turkey because us has placed its missile known as jupiter 1 i think jupiter basically 1 2 i don't remember exactly jupiter 1 i think so us has placed its missile jupiter in the turkey and which is very close to russia so it was a direct threat to russia so they said russian said soviet said that we will only take our missiles back from the cuba only on one condition that if you will take back your missile from the turkey this much you have understood so again like emotional letter all is just drama basically you have to save your interest understanding फर्स्ट नाइट को वो इमोशनल लेटर लिखते हैं कि हम दुनिया के साथ इतना बुरा कर देंगे जो कभी इमेजिनेबल नहीं होगा रशिया रशिया नहीं रहेगा यूएस यूएस नहीं रहेगा बिकॉज न्यूक्लियर कैटास्ट्रोफ इज सच एक्चुअली दिस सोवियत लीडर सोवियत बेसिकली सोवियत दे प्लेस्ड मिसाइल फॉर डेटरेंस पर्पज बिकॉज यूएस वॉज प्लानिंग टू इन्वेड क्यूबा फ्रॉम बे ऑफ पिग्स बाय to overthrow the communist regime of fidel castro now they have to protect their allies because cuba was communist at that time but us want to overthrow them so for deterrence purpose they place that us will not attack on cuba again but us uh, perceive it as a threat to their security so they thought that maybe russia is planning to attack us so in response they also started placing their missiles nearby the atlantic coasts and all so it kind of create a scenario of nuclear war any time nuclear war so now you have understood the whole new, new uh, sorry cuban missile crisis so what happened that then uh, john f kennedy and soviet leader nikita khrushchev they met and they did, kennedy assured that we will not attack cuba so kindly take your missiles back and he also assured that like we will take our missiles back from पहले से ही किया था ना हाँ बहुत टर्की में बहुत पहले से किया था यूएस ने तो पहले तो नहीं किया ना कभी मौका तो चाहिए ना राइट सो देन नाउ दे डिसाइडेड एंड क्यूबन मिसाइल क्राइसिस दिस क्राइसिस वाज एंडेड दिस मच यू हैव अंडरस्टूड 
any doubt regarding cuban missile crisis right now two important outcomes of the cuban missile crisis first is prior to cuban missile crisis there was no direct link between us and ussr they were just reading through newspaper watching in media channels and all and they were just spying each other whatever they whatever the information they were getting about each other it was misinformation also because there was no direct link but after cuban missile crisis to avoid any future miscommunication misunderstanding which could have led to this type of crisis again they established a direct telephone link between us and ussr which is known as hotline so if somebody will ask you what is the outcome of cuban missile crisis first is establishment of direct phone link known as hotline between whom ussr and us second is that this crisis was such that both the superpowers they realized that the threat is even beyond imagination so they thought of creating or establishing some kind of nuclear treaties non proliferation treaties or test ban treaties kind of thing this much you have understood right so so far we have covered all the major events now we will quickly look at the important treaties signed during the cold war era i am not covering here india china war india pakistan war why because we will cover all these when we will do bilateral relations i will cover india pakistan wars everything about india pakistan when we will do india pakistan relation i will cover about india us when we will do india us and about india china also and india russia is not in your syllabus but i have placed why because russia is very important to understand the whole geopolitics or to understand india's relations with other nations also right so that is why i have kept an extra class on russia for your syllabus because for me your understanding of the concept is very important it doesn't matter the classes are 20 or 18 okay so now you have got the basic idea of korean war vietnam war cuban missile crisis marshall plan what was marshall plan basically the modified version of two man doc doctrine right and uh, nato very important from exam perspective berlin blockade this much you have understood now we will have a quick look at the major treaties first is partial test ban treaty so for partial test ban treaty the proposal was presented by india again important point in 1954 india proposed partial test ban treaty or any kind of treaty which can ban nuclear testing right because uh, india we were from the beginning from 1945 when us dropped the nuclear weapon on japan from that time only nehru was very much against nuclear weapon because he was idealistic in his nature na so he was and everywhere he was promoting or he was advocating for universal disarmament we will learn about universal disarmament in un uh, united nation there is a branch of un or unssod basically united nations special such uh, sessions on disarmament so we will learn that right don't worry when we will do un right so india propose the first kind of a proposal or agreement in 1954 to the countries of the world at the un basically you can say that we should come up with kind of treaty or agreement which can ban all kind of testing right it is also known as limited test ban treaty what is the name of ptbt limited test ban treaty now the treaty was signed on 5 august 1963 in moscow by the us soviet union and the uk because at this time only these three countries were the because china tested in 1964 right now what is important here to note that that this ptbt or limited test ban treaty it ban testing in the air sea land but it did not ban nuclear testing underground right so underground testing was not banned other any kind of testing whether it's in the sea land air water all was banned this important second is nuclear 
non proliferation treaty basically npt 1968 now the cuban missile crisis it gave a very strong push to the world powers that we should think or we should create some kind of system that other countries should not acquire nuclear weapons basically npt is also regarded as bias treaty why because it divided the world into first just listen the story of npt fact you can read because it divided the world into two haves and have nots now who are haves five nations p5 basically permanent member of unsc which the treaty recognized as a nuclear weapon state and rest all are known as non nuclear weapon state so india has not signed the npt because india says it is a bias treaty because it divide the world into haves and have nots it is a discriminatory treaty if they are so much concerned about nuclear non proliferation then why they are not going for universal disarmament first they should reduce the number of their weapons first they should follow the policies or principles of disarmament then they should ask other nations that you will not acquire nuclear weapons in future right and when this treaty was opened for signature in 1968 and many nations signed and it came into force in 1970 india did not sign the treaty why because at that time china already had conducted the nuclear test in 1964 and india being a close neighbor of china that is also a china is hostile neighbor right we don't have any very friendly relations so we were very much in a security dilemma kind of situations so oh, so in a way we were planning that if the principle of universal disarmament will not get followed we will go for nuclear testing that is why india did not sign because india argued that it divide the world into haves and have nots so it is a bias treaty so if somebody will ask you is npt a good treaty you will say no it is a bias treaty because you have to always speak from the indian and it is bias right oh, this treaty assures only one thing that is that all nations of the world they get nuclear technology for for peaceful purpose peaceful purpose basically this electricity production and other kinds of things right so they will get nuclear technology from the nuclear weapon states but only for peaceful purpose they can't acquire nuclear weapons so in a way you can say npt put a limitation on the other nations apart from this five right now why the world leaders were thinking of creating such kind of treaty first i have already told you first reason was cuban missile crisis second reason was china testing china tested nuclear weapon in 1964 and now here a, again a story that us through its intelligence agencies cbi and all they knew that china is planning to conduct nuclear test but they were not very much sure that china will because they were thinking that china is very weak right so underestimate but ultimately it blown the weapon right and then they thought that we have to do something about it so that other nations will not go with this kind of weapons right because they were fighting in southeast asia and also they thought that if china had acquired the nuclear weapon it will create a kind of disturbance in the southeast asia or south asia as well you uh, nuclear uh, sorry npt you have understood any doubt in this and at present it has 191 members so only four countries haven't signed the npt first is india if india will not sign obviously pakistan will not sign then israel and north korea right and one important thing is that npt ensure non nuclear weapon state access to peaceful nuclear technology but under whom guidance international atomic energy agency now this agency in the whole world it uh, you know you can say it control the export import of nuclear fissile material like uranium and all why which nuclear weapons can be created so that these uh, sorry fissile material should not go into the hands of terrorist kind of organization non state actors so that because they can make dirty bombs right so i a e a international atomic energy agency it look after the import export or nuclear regime of the whole world right basically it controls then 
this you have to remember that india is not a signatory of np because north korea was a signatory of npt but it came out of npt then after coming out of npt it uh, tested nuclear weapon initially it was a member yeah and israel to pehle tha hi nahi na itna because it was fighting with palestine for its so recognition survival and all right then strategic arms limitation talk salt one from here you have to just remember when salt one was signed it was signed in 1972 again between us and ussr so it was the first time in the history when both superpower decide to reduce the number of nuclear missiles so they thought that we will dismantle or we will destroy our nuclear weapons we will reduce the number of nuclear weapons salt one has been regarded as the golden victory of detant strategy or you can say also detant phase i told you na cold war phase detant phase these phase many have divided so detant phase is basically when many treaties regarding nuclear weapons were signed so this phase is known as the tant phase right then anti ballistic missile treaty abm treaty this treaty was also signed in 1972 between us president nixon and so soviet leader brezhnev right then salt 2 it was signed in june 1979 now why i have put month here june why because this treaty was signed in june 1979 but in december 1979 ussr invaded afghanistan so this treaty failed now you understood why i have put month here right that is it now there is a very interesting story behind this treaty what happened just listen the story first what happened that in us on its 3 mile island there is island known as 3 mile island on that island nuclear incident happened right basically some kind of nuclear wall was closed and i think water could not supplied basically nuclear accident happened and you know how devastated or how you know brutish nuclear accident can be right so after this accident people started developing hatred towards nuclear weapon or you can say nuclear technology overall because these were not nuclear weapons these were nuclear reactors for nuclear energy and from there accident happened and in the us anti nuclear or movement against arms race started slowly this movement created the you know situation in the whole world that the countries in the whole world or the people in the whole world this started a very strong you know disliking or you can say hatred feeling hatred is a very good word towards nuclear so they start they thought that countries should find some kind of system should develop some kind of system so that in a way very slowly they can reach towards the disarmament but this movement was very strong in us although the movement was in whole world but it was very strong in us why because accident happened where us right now what is the dilemma for us because us thought if i will take unilaterally action to reduce nuclear weapons or nuclear technology then russia will get an upper hand so ultimately russia will emerge as a victorious kind of security dilemma na or russia can attack us by taking the advantage of my situation so they convince russia that it is not good and we should sign some kind of treaty and this like salt one because salt one was very successful so on the basis of salt one they signed salt two now you have understood why they signed salt two because of three mile island crisis right and but this treaty failed why because in the same year in december 1979 soviet union invaded afghanistan and what happened in afghanistan whole world has witnessed even afghanistan is known as the land of curse for the something like that yeah because um, graveyard of empires uh, graveyard of empire scholars call uh, afghanistan as the graveyard of empires now very important treaty next one is intermediate range nuclear force treaty which was signed in 1987 between us and ussr 
and it came into force into 1988 and on 2nd august 2019 basically in 2019 us unilaterally pull out of the treaty and where there is only two member in the treaty if one will leave the treaty what will other will also so basically trump us president trump he came out of the treaty and he gave the reason he blamed russia basically he said that russia is not following the norms of the treaty and all and therefore we will not remain in the treaty for further so trump basically us president trump he came out of the treaty right then strategic arms reduction treaty start one which was signed in 1991 but what happened for this treaty us president ronald reagan he proposed start one during the 90s 80s itself but it was signed in 1991 but in 1991 what happened ussr got disintegrated so uss are disintegrator so then this treaty came into force very later although it should have come earlier but because of ussr disintegration this treaty took a very long time to enter into force and this treaty ended into 2009 right and after this also there are some treaties like new start treaty and other which were signed in the post cold war period so tomorrow when we will do the end of the cold war then i will just give you a table or short points where other treaties and their date because from your exam this much I, even i haven't put like what happened under which treaty but if you will see my research paper there are very details like under this treaty they decided to reduce the number of their weapons to to 2000 this intermediate range missiles they try to they stop this kind of testing this kind of missiles so because under every treaty it is not like they signed and treaty entered into force under treaty they set some kind of you can say benchmarks like we will reduce this much number of this missiles whether it is intermediate range missile long range missile ballistic missile we will reduce the number of nuclear warheads to this to this so they were in a way these treaties help both uss and ussr to reduce the number of their weapons because during the cold war era both of these superpowers have weapons of tens of thousands so these treaty they brought the number to very low they brought the number down so in a way this treaty proved helpful but still due to ambitions of other countries invading and all or some other kind of you can say suspicion among other powers because us russia uh, us nuclear strategy nuclear doctrine or nuclear strategy or national security strategy whenever you will read you will find that us openly declared russia as its enemy right they both see each other as their enemy now important events of cold war is clear to you first one is truman doctrine second is berlin blockade and berlin blockade fall into fall in 1989 that is why 1989 is also known as the end of cold war right and after that marshall plan and in response to marshall plan form in form then after that nato and in response to nato warsaw pact and many scholars and even us they assume that why warsaw pact was signed because west germany was included or was made a member of nato and nato was initially what treaty in 1948 ha huh, in 1948 western european nations western europe basically not all western europe they signed brussels defense treaty to collaborate on military front but later this treaty was joined by us canada and many other nations and ultimately it become or it established in the form of nato and uh, at present how many members 31 recent finland joined in 2023 and when this treaty was established in oh sorry nato was established in 1949 at that time how many members founding members 12 this much is clear warsaw pact is clear then after that korean war if somebody will ask you the korean war ended in 1953 what you will say 1991 because 1953 just a cease fire 
right but officially the war ended in 1991 when both north korea and south korea they agreed that we will not attack each other and then vietnam war in vietnam war who emerged victorious communism right and north vietnamese they succeeded in uniting the whole vietnam basically they took over the control of south vietnam as well which was under the control of capitalist regime right then space race in space race you have to remember the launch of sputnik explorer 1 and neil arm strong right then cuban missile crisis you have understood the story of cuban missile crisis you know bay of pigs and you know fidel castro maybe and you also know this uh, why what was the exact intention why because us has also placed missile in the okay this much is clear right then outcome kya the uske that direct hotline was established and second that they agree to establish a nuclear test ban treaty now what is the feature of ptbt that it ban all kind of testing except underground testing of jitni samajh utna kaam kar diya na then nuclear non proliferation treaty and pt basically from indian pers you have to remember it was open for signature in 1968 entered into force into 1970 but from critical perspective this treaty is biased by because it divided the world into haves and have nots it just assure one thing that non nuclear weapon state will get peaceful nuclear technology but under the administration of whom i a e e right then salt one salt two abm inf and start one all these you can remember you just have to remember the dates from your perspective exam perspective just there but i have given little bit in detail so that you can make linkage between things that is why i have given you the maps as well right and for you homework is when iaea was established international atomic energy agency now you will tell this me in the next class in the next class we will learn about end of cold war now you have understood the whole politics of cold war what was happening and these countries were doing what even they went for nuclear treaties like test ban treaties and other kind of treaties just first just to ensure that other countries should not acquire nuclear weapon and pt clearly shows that second is they were itself very much i mean concern related to the uh this threat of nuclear war because it can devastate without you can say even beyond your imagination right because what was at that time when during the cold war time there is a one very interesting fact about nuclear weapon which i would like to tell you that during the cold war time they kept their nuclear weapons at a high alert high alert means that nuclear weapons and their delivery uh, mechanism means which will deliver them right missile and delivery system they were intact so even in miscalculation even if by mistake you press a button anything could have happened but now the tensions are less if you say so no country even very even no country they kept their nuclear weapons in a high alert mode but cold war was a period when there was high tensions so they kept their nuclear weapons at a very high alert mode and they know that even a small miscalculation can destroy the whole world and that is why they went with some this kind of treaties right this much you have understood the geopolitics behind okay thank you we will meet in the next class tomorrow you have test all the best